I want to bring into our conversation NBC correspondent Ali Vitali. Ali Vitali, I haven't seen you in about 15 minutes. What have your two phones told you in that time? <laughs> Too long for us to be apart from each other, Alicia, but it's good because at least I was able to get on the Chris Christie campaign's official live stream. Of course, his event, because we're looking at the other side of the screen right now, hasn't started, but that doesn't mean that he's not talking. In fact, as our team was listening to the beginning of the live stream, it appears that there was some kind of a hot mic moment where Christie was talking about effectively the impact of him getting out of the race and what that impact could be on the other contenders. This is all coming together in just the last few minutes, but one of the things that we overheard is that Christie said DeSantis called him, in Christie's words, petrified, and that at another point in this brief hot mic moment before the event has started, Christie said to whoever he was talking to, you and I both know it, she's not up to this, referencing Nikki Haley, and at another point saying that she was still 20 or so points down from Trump in states like New Hampshire. So if we had any question about what our sources were saying to mm -hmm. us about Christie not being expected to endorse Certainly, that seems to underscore that it's not likely he's going to go all in for any of his opponents at this stage. That's very notable. I'm interested in hearing if Chris Christie gets on stage and is as candid as he was during this apparent hot mic moment that our team was early to and was able to listen to in real time. But if you think about the political ramifications of this, which are equally as important, if not as juicy, as us listening to the candidates behind the scenes talk about each other, the political implications are much like what we were talking about 15 minutes ago, which is that Christie dropping out is why many of my Haley sources today are feeling like they've got a little extra pep in their step. This is good news for them because not only is the field winnowing, but our polling data shows that Christie dropping out does benefit people who are not necessarily named Trump. Trump. Now, the Trump team would push back on that idea, but you look at the numbers, you look at the data, you listen to people like Tim Miller, who know New Hampshire well, the role of independents in a state like New Hampshire is going to be really important, and those independents don't typically have the knee-jerk reaction of just backing Trump. I think the other part of the conversation that you guys were having, which is, frankly, also the conversation I was having with my sources throughout the day, is why do this now? I'm not sure that I understand the political thinking around why you should do this on a day like today, as opposed to once you see the results in New Hampshire and once you see who's strong, who's not, can you have an impact as it gets closer in the Granite State? In fact, I would love to hear from Michael or, or Simone or anyone here who's, who's worked on campaigns who could maybe help explain that logic to me because I'm really interested in it. But certainly when you think about the role that Christie has played in this race, he has really been the only one willing to stand up up in quite unpopular fashion within his party and say, hey, Donald Trump should be disqualified from being president again because of things like January 6th, which are fundamentally anti-small D democratic and the antithesis of what it is to be an American and disrupt the peaceful transfer of power. Christie has been unequivocal. Certainly it's a shift given the fact that Christie was an early endorser of the former president in 2015. He went on throughout multiple campaigns to help him prepare for things like the debate, even got COVID during debate prep with the former president in the lead up to one of the 2020 general election debates. So it was a serious about face, but a moment where the call was very much coming from inside the House, a former Trump acolyte and ally coming out, running a campaign that was steeped in saying, this man is not fit for office again. And I think that when we write the story of what 2024 looks like, yes, it seems at this point like the assumption is and the data backs it up that Trump will be the nominee yet again. But I do think it's important for us to note that there are people who are trying to stand in the in the rift and try to show the party that there are other alternatives. It's not just Liz Cheney anymore. Chris Christie ran a campaign entirely about it. For those